Hello, this tutorial will show you how Photo VCarv can be used to convert a digital photograph or image into a permanent carving or engraving. It's very quick and very easy to do. I'm just going to load an image file. This is a JPEG that's been downloaded off the internet. The photograph is displayed in the three dimensional view. Next, we set the size that we we wish to carve or engrave the job so set the size let's say we wish to carve this 16 inches high the width is automatically scaled to keep the right proportions for the photograph we can specify where we wish the origin to be on the machine table so here we're going to say bottom left hand corner of the image is at x0 y0 next we specify where the z0 position is and in this case we're going to set it off the material surface Let's say we're cutting a piece of material that's a quarter of an inch thick. Hit the apply button and the set cutting parameters option becomes available. So we go to the next step, step three. Here we select the tool that we wish to carve with. In this case, let's say we're going to cut with a 60 degree included angle tool, which is a quarter of an inch diameter. On the right hand side of the tool database, we get the tool geometry. You also get the maximum depth that the tool is, can carve at, the spindle speed, the feed rates, and these will depend on the material that you're going to cut. And if you have an automatic tool changer, then the, the tool number in the carousel. Click the OK button. We could, if we wish, edit the tool settings. So we can open the tool, just edit. And here, for example, we may say, OK, we wish to slow the feed rate down because we're cutting a tough material. Let's say we're going to run it at 70 inches per minute. Click OK. Get the summary of the feed rates and the spindle speed displayed. Next, we specify the carving depth that, or the maximum depth that we wish to to the tool to cut to. So if we set this to be 80 thousandths, what this means is in the very dark areas of the picture, so for example in some of the regions in the hair and on the collar, the cutter will be cutting 80 thousandths of an inch deep. In the lighter areas, the tool will be cutting shallower. You'll see that we, at 80 thousandths deep, we're going to have 114 lines. If I increase the line spacing, the number of lines reduces. Now if we're cutting wood, we need a, a line spacing of about 120 percent and that leaves us with 95 lines to cut, to hold the detail in the photograph we're going to cut the lines across the image at an angle of 22 and a half degrees and we want the tool to retract 0.1 of an inch as it moves from one pass to the next one so calculate the software instantly calculates the tool path and shows the result in the preview 3d window we can rotate the model by clicking and holding with the left mouse button and we can zoom by clicking and holding with the right mouse button. Now you can see because we only have 95 lines there's not very much definition in the photograph. If we reduce the carving depth to say 60 thousandths now we get 127 lines. We say recalculate we get more detail so the photograph becomes more realistic now the, the image or the original photograph didn't have very much contrast it was quite washed out so we can increase the contrast using the slider let's say increase it by 25 percent and recalculate now you'll see that the image becomes bolder and the dark areas become darker you can experiment with different contrast settings until you get the result that you feel is correct. When you're happy with the finished results, we can then preview the job in different materials and save the toolpath. We could say, okay, we wish to look at this design into a piece of oak. Again, push and pull with the right hand mouse button. So we wish to look at this in a piece of lighter wood. toolpath estimated machining time is all already calculated so it, the software tells us that based on the feeds 
that we programmed for the tool it's going to take about 33 minutes to cut this job we then save the toolpath to disk so you select the post processor that your control system needs let's say for example it's a g-code file save the toolpath give the toolpath a name and save it to disk you can save the file so it's saved permanently so if we say file save as give the the file a name and save it to disk this allows us to close the file and reopen it at any time so reopen the file the parameters that we use to engrave the photograph are automatically stored and we can go back change the settings and recalculate them if we need to hope you enjoyed watching the video and thank you for your interest in photo vcov